Hello and welcome. Well, on a recent morning run, I was reminiscing about the technology of this CRT display and just how crazy it is. We were shooting beams of particles steered by precise magnetic fields to make an image, and this was not an unusual thing to have in your living room. So, inspired by that, I decided to build a project using CRTs. The other part of the inspiration for this project came from the old audio displays on things like hi-fi and CD players. The little bouncing bars of LEDs are... Now this little flat CRT I'm using had a screen that looked something like paper. It was a kind of white color and that inspired me to build a wooden frame around it, similar to the old Japanese soji doors. So I would have a raw wood frame covering most of it that would mount the electronics and provide a housing for my CRT. And then I would fill in some of the blank squares with paper. And I think this will provide some nice contrast between the electronics and a little bit softer quality that comes from the wood and the paper. Now, how can I drive a audio waveform or an audio level on my CRT? There's a couple ways I could go about this, and I did think about trying to build some complex circuitry to map a waveform into the CRT's own raster image generator, but then I decided that I could just disconnect the horizontal deflection coil and connect that to an audio amp. The horizontal deflection will map out the audio waveform being fed into it. And because the vertical deflection is refreshed about 60 times a second, it should move up and down slow enough that you're able to visually see the waveform. If I did it the other way around, the um, horizontal deflection does it hundreds of times a second and the waveform would probably be too fast to be visible. So by just connecting the horizontal to our audio amp and leaving the vertical connected to the image generation system inside of our CRT, we should be able to get a visual waveform of whatever audio which is coming into this. Now, instead of driving this from an external audio source, such as a CD player or an MP3 player or a computer, I'm actually gonna drive this from a small microphone. This should mean that it will display audio signals even if it's not connected to anything. And the microphone also lets me build in a bit of interesting um, functionality into the circuit using that as a kind of sensor. This also makes it a little bit interactive as you can talk near it and that will be displayed on the screen of the CRT. The construction technique I used here is borrowed from Eric Brandel. So it uses pin headers on the ends and then long power and signal wires soldered in between those. And this gives a really convenient way to build the circuit up from that. It also allows me to connect it just at the ends to my frame here. And that is a very convenient way to build it. Eric is a master of freeform electronics and you should definitely check out his work. The audio driving circuit I'm using here is an LM386 audio amp, and I use them in tons of different things. There's nothing too special about this circuit, it just uses a small mic and then drives the horizontal deflection coil through a capacitor. The CRT's power supply was 12 volts. Now, I can get the 12 volts from a couple ways, but I decided to actually use one of these small programmable USB-C modules. Now this can be set to provide any of the selectable DC voltages from a USB-C power supply. I simply set it up to do 12 volts at one amp. It does feel somewhat strange powering a CRT 
from USB-C. Like these are two different eras that maybe shouldn't meet, but maybe there's something special in that as well. Now, I will actually have some logic chips here, and I could not find any 12 volt logic trip. So I split my circuit into a 12 volt side and a 5 volt side. The 5 volt will run the logic chip for my power switching, and then the 12 volt side will drive the CRT and the audio amp and driver circuitry. My audio switching side uses a small set of Schmidt trigger inverters and it takes uh, the audio output signal from my amp and watches that when it goes over a certain threshold when it produces here's a loud enough noise it will switch on and stay on for a certain amount of time. Now both the amount of time on and the sensitivity is adjusted via potentiometers so I can um, allow this circuit to only turn on for loud noises or turn on and stay on for a long time. This switching circuit is something I found online and it turned out to be quite good. I had designed my own based around kind of a beam neuron system, but this proved to be slightly more stable and provided somewhat more consistent results. Although it does turn off no matter what. So after its uh, time has elapsed, it will switch off and then it will switch on again. Whereas some of the other circuits will stay on as long as they hear a loud enough noise. Turned out this isn't really a problem in practice, but is something to consider. Now, the output of this is connected to a MOSFET, which drives a low sw side switch for my CRT and also my horizontal deflection coil. So when this is off, it will not power the coil or the CRT and it should be relatively efficient on standby. I love the way that these little freeform circuits look on their own. All the complex circuitry visible and exposed and they have a certain unique quality to them that I cannot get enough of. Now that the electronics was done, it was just time to add a few finishing touches. I mounted this frame hard onto my CRT's mounting points, and that would allow me to use this frame to mount the CRT to something if I wanted to in the future. I used a technique of drilling and pinning the high stress joints on this just so there is no possible way that this can come apart. I did this for all of the main joints on my frame. The top of the frame snaps into the bottom using a couple brass pins. This is not terribly secure, but the top of the frame will have no real load on it and it's just used to mount my circuitry.
I printed out some warning labels inspired by old CRTs, and this will be put onto the back frame. Now these are not necessary, but I love the little extra touch and feel it gives. I also added a small nameplate onto the front of the device just to give it a little bit of extra character and it also made it a little bit more finished looking as well. Plus I love the slight pop the paper gives the rest of the device. It truly has a, in my opinion, a certain amount of magic to it. Now that all of the parts are ready to go, we can just assemble this. So I designed this so it could be taken apart as needed, without too much difficulty. There's two mounting points on the back that actually slot into the back of the CRT, holding it very securely to the frame, and then I have one extra screw that just secures that so it can't pop off. I don't know how many of my devices actually get serviced in the future by me, but I do like to build in a certain amount of serviceability into them. There was only a total of three wires connecting the top electronics to the bottom. Power, ground, and then a signal wire for the horizontal deflection coil. The electronics were all bolted onto the top piece with small wood screws. You can see the left and right electronics parts are only connected by three wires as well. One signal wire and then one power and one ground. Because the power supply is on the one side, it has the different voltage sources all built into one point. Now that it's together, it's time for its first full test run. A little red LED comes on whenever the audio circuit is triggered, and this gives me a good indicator as to when it's heard something, as sometimes it takes a second or two for the CRT to warm up. And you can see it is beautifully displaying the audio waveforms. Hello. Now, some of the projects I make for YouTube have little things that I don't quite finish or details that I'm not super happy with. But this one is something I absolutely love. It's not particularly useful, but it's got such unique character. The hours of time spent on the breadboard certainly paid off as the electronic side of this are virtually flawless. I think that this will make a lovely addition to my desk and I plan on having it living here for a long time. Anyway, thanks for watching, I'll see you next time. Take care.